Hey everybody, welcome back here to A Place to Heal. If you've never been here before, my name is Marie. And as I promised today, I am going to show you um, how to make homemade elderberry syrup. I love elderberry syrup and let me tell you something. I've gone the last four years without a single person in this household getting sick because of this fabulous recipe that I'm getting ready to show you right now. Plus, I get to come into my kitchen. Stay tuned after I give you the recipe because I got some information for you that you're gonna wanna hear, or maybe not, but you know, stay tuned anyway. So I get to come into my kitchen and I actually get to do a video standing up. I never, <laughs> I'm always doing video sitting down. Okay, so some of the things that you're going to need, and I'm going to put the recipe below this video because I know a lot of you are like, Marie, you didn't give us the recipe. I know, you know, that's just laziness, but I'm going to try, okay? So the what you're going to need for this, you're going to need a couple of herbs. You're going to need some water and you're going to need some apple cider vinegar and you're going to need some food grade glycerin or honey. And I'll explain all that as we go along. All right, so the first things you're going to need is you're going to need some elderberries. Elderberries are really hard to get this time of year, so you're probably going to have to search because all the herbalists are like getting the elderberries to make the elderberry syrup because, listen, flus, cold, everything, this stuff knocks them out or it stops them from progressing. That's why, um, you know, the herbalists love them so much. And um, so they're kind of hard to get. So try wherever you can get on Amazon, on, yeah, I mean, anywhere. If you can find it, get it there, as, as long as they're organic, uh, because this stuff is going in, you know, to take stuff out. So you have elderberries. You're going to need some echinacea. Uh, you're going to need some rose hips. And all these are herbs. And you're going to need some astragalus and some nettle leaf. So you're gonna need one, two, three, four, basically five herbs. I went and actually purchased them all yesterday, everything, and it ran me like 20 bucks. So that is a lot cheaper, because I check around and I check the elderberry syrup and their prices are insane. And not only are they insane, but it's got this preservative and that preservative and you don't need all that. Okay, so here we go. All right, so the first thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna take one cup of your dried elderberries, which I love the smell of. So I took uh, one cup of my elderberries. You're gonna take a quarter cup of the echinacea. Okay, you're gonna take a quarter cup of the rose hips. Your rose hips should almost look like um, almost like sea moss to me. That's what it looks like, but it smells really good. They're kind of like a reddish orangey color and they smell really good. When you're cooking this stuff, your whole house, my whole house right now smells like, mm. and nettle tea, which I love nettles. If you've had a consultation with me, you know that I love nettles uh, for the kidneys. They're great for the kidneys. Okay, so what I've done, let me make sure my pan's not hot, no. Okay, so what I've done, is you take all your herbs, your cup of this, quarter, 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 and you put them into a saucepan. And you want to add the herbs in first, okay? And then you wanna take four cups of clean water. Don't use sink water. That stuff is loaded with junk. So you're gonna take four cups of I don't care if it's distilled, I don't care. You should really not use distilled because distilled is gonna pull out some of the properties. So try to stri stick to spring water. So I use four cups of spring water and then you're going to pour the water over the herbs and once you have the water poured over the herbs, you're gonna set it on high and you're gonna bring those, those right to a boil. Don't walk away, you don't want them boiling too long, you don't want to you know, get all those properties to go. So you, as soon as it comes down to a boil, you wanna turn it down to your lowest setting. I have a gas stove, I turn it down to below two. I turn it down to my lowest setting. 
and once it is at your lowest setting you want to leave it there between I believe it's uh, yeah 30 to 45 minutes I go in between so I usually I set my alarm for 40 minutes and I always cook it with the lid on the pot because I don't want all that water to boil off and then I'm left with nothing so you definitely want a pot that has a, a nice tight fitting lid all right so once it's all done you're gonna end up with this beautiful muck <laughs> but it smells so good and you're gonna strain it through something my favorite way of straining please don't ask me for the link i wish i had it i would love to buy a second one these are uh they're rice mashers so i believe i got this one oh my gosh at bed bath and beyond because they have all the little holes you can see that and then it has this great flat lid so when you pop it down you squeeze it everything comes out so what i like to do and it sits perfect on my pan so once your herbs are nice and cooked and they've been cooking for 45 minutes you are going to turn your stove off and after you turn your stove off you're going to let it steep just let it sit there let it seep until all has pulled all those properties out you should be able to touch the pan and it's not hot when you go to do it so with this rice let me see if i can get this going you can use um if you've got a rice masher that's great you can also use um a soup sock you know something that you can do it or i even got this one from florida it's actually for coffee but it's they're the finest strainers that you can get or you can use a very fine strainer. So I'm gonna put that one in there. I'm gonna run it through my, and hope to God I don't make a mess. Because I actually, if you noticed, if you go back on my videos, I have not done videos in a very, very long time in the kitchen because I was doing a video for you guys on how to make a salve of all things right on how to make and i can't even remember what the salve was for right now but thank god i had some kids here with me that day and i ended up okay so this one what you do is you just squeeze it and it takes all the goodness out of it so i had some kids here and i was making this salve and uh i accidentally poured the it, you know you have to in salve you have to use uh, beeswax and as I turned around I hit the pan and when I hit the pan I, I was in the middle of a video so I actually was able to rewind and watch this happen on video it was kind of scary you get my trash can over here and when as I hit the pan the whole pan fell on my side and I ended up causing myself some pretty bad burns and I ended up having to go to the hospital and I, that's got to be the most painful thing in the whole world is when you get burned um, they told me I couldn't ice it not to put ice on it and I was like yeah forget you I, I couldn't even take the ice off of it for five minutes without the pain coming because you know hot wax <laughs> getting burned with hot wax is unreal so after that I kind of shied away from doing videos for you guys on camera because I'm trying to pay attention to what I'm doing here and I'm trying to pay attention to what I'm doing there and I just it was too much and um, I've kind of outdone it there we go and the last of it you want to get every last bit of that because I want to get every last bit of syrup so with this syrup you once it's done once it's finished you can actually put it into your refrigerator and you can have it in your refrigerator for up to three months so it's going to get you through depending on you know your family size if you have a bigger family size then double the recipe right because you're gonna have to give it to all the kids and the hubby and everything else so 
do the last one. So you can actually um, store this in the refrigerator. Um, I prefer mason jar is the best way to store these or if you have a nice little container glass glass not anything else please use glass so you can keep all those properties of the herbs intact okay let me put this in the sink um so there you go so now you're left with this you'll see it in just a second so now once i do that then that's when i take my lovely cloth and then I pour it in there there we go and then as I go putting it out it, it goes sifting it so you can actually keep this in your refrigerator for two to three months. So it should get you through the holidays, no problem. Through all the, the cold and flu season. I'm going to put this over here because I'm going to make a mess over there. And the way that you want to take this is you want to take it every two to three hours I like to take it every three hours if you start feeling the sneezes coming on uh, you know the grandkids start sneezing whatever teaspoon so um, oh yeah I'm so glad I did it over here this would have been a mess it's like milk in a cow um, it's going everywhere <laughs> so you want to take it every uh, three hours I say three hours you can take it every two two to three hours if you start feeling you know the itchy ears or the sneezing or you, you know you, you know when you start feeling icky and then you start taking that if all you want to do is get through the holidays without getting sick then all I do is give the kids and myself one teaspoon in the morning before they go to school and then one teaspoon at night before everybody goes to bed so all you need to do Oh, I got it all over my floor. Yeah. And you want to wipe this stuff up because elderberry stain, right? So because they have that pretty color. So, man, I got it everywhere. And I have a white floor. So that's pretty. Okay. <clears throat> so there is my syrup. Okay, I'm gonna get every last bit of it. So see, you got this beautiful, can you see that? Whoa, looks so pretty. All right, so once you have all your lovely syrup, you're going to take one cup <clears throat> of food grade vegetable glycerin. Now, you don't have to use the glycerin. You can use one cup of honey. But before you decide which one you want to use, uh, make sure if you're giving it to children under two years old, don't use the honey because you should never give honey to, to children who are less than two years old. So for me, if, and if you're going to use honey, use the raw um, because it has a lot more healing properties than you know regular honey. And number three, if you're a diabetic or you have issues with uh, sugar, any kind of sugar intolerance or, what, or you have a diabetic in the house or anything, don't use the honey. Use the glycerin. The, the vegetable glycerin is just as sweet, but it, it will not give you those sugar spikes. So I prefer the glycerin um, over the honey for this particular recipe. So I'm going to take a, a cup of that. And I also have, um, I have a viral tincture that I sell. So I always keep it on hand because I have a viral tincture for this time of year. And those of you, which I sell like mad this time of year, because what happens is that a lot of people go into their doctor and all they have is viral infections and they won't give you anything for viral. They'll give you stuff for bacteria, but not viral. 
So I actually sell a viral tincture and I, it sells like mad this time of year. And I need the glycerin. So I searched and searched and searched. I'll put a link below that if you guys are interested in that one too. Um, I, I, I've searched around for the glycerin and I have found it here in town, but for twice the price that Amazon sells it for. Like I can get this big bottle and I think my herb store wants like $80 for something like this. I'm like, yeah, you guys are nuts. That's not going to happen. Okay, so I just put a, a cup of glycerin in there. And then you're going to get a half a cup of apple cider vinegar. I like to use Bragg's because it's got the mother in it. So I'm going to use half a cup of apple cider vinegar. You do not want to omit the apple cider vinegar because the apple cider vinegar is your preservative. That's what's going to allow you to have it in the fridge for three months without it spoiling. Okay, so there you go. And then I just shake it up. Look at that. It's perfect. Perfect right to the top. So I'm just going to shake keep shaking it and shaking it till all that glycerin is mixed in and all that apple cider vinegar is mixed in and all that goodness is mixed in. And then this is going to go, this will actually, there's four of us living here. There's um, my two granddaughters, my daughter and myself. So there's four of us living here and this 32 ounce mason jar will get us through um, the next three months all four of us so that's enough for four people so that will give you some idea um, you know how many people you have if you have eight you want to make 32 of these uh, 30 not 32 not 32 two 32 ounce mason jars or if you want you can make 32 and sell them to all your friends you know or Christmas is coming up these are great Christmas gifts I like to put them in these little ones right and um, put the the lids on them the plastic lids and put little bows on them and give them to my friends so there you go what great idea right all right so that is how easy it is to make homemade elderberry syrup and you're saving yourself a fortune compared to the stuff that sells out in the stores all right so I promise you guys an update and I'm basically gonna ask for your patience because what's happening right now is, don't look behind me. My house looks like it's been ransacked. Um, I decided, some of you that have been following me for a while, you saw my video of when I moved into this house. And when I moved into this house, this house was literally manifested in my head. I had like $300 to my name. <laughs> literally and my credit was horrible and when i'm talking horrible i'm talking horrible i know some of you going yeah it's not as bad as mine trust me it was down in the 200s my my credit was horrible and i literally manifested this home i i wanted a home that year and i would look at houses and i would tell myself i'm going to have a house i'm going to have a house and it just so happens, I also did a video, so you guys can follow that journey. I know some of you have seen it. Uh, my, my old guy that used to sell me car insurance says, hey, I'm a realtor now. <laughs> and the next thing I know, I'm signing papers to buy a home. I wasn't, my husband was. And I always hated that because I'm like, oh, so if anything ever happens, I lose my home that I manifested. And he gets to keep it and that's so unfair and you know whatever but anyway as fate would have it we ended up getting divorced six months after we bought this home and the judge said the home is yours because <laughs> i signed all the paperwork everything so um i've been living in this home now for i think it's been five years believe it or not and i took you guys through the tour of the nightmare that was this home when i first bought it and now <laughs> I'm done here, believe it or not. It's kind of a bittersweet, I'm gonna miss it, but I'm so happy to be moving because when I moved into this home, it served a certain purpose. And that purpose was to 
open up a clinic in the back, which I found out later on I cannot do. And I also, it served the purpose just for me and my husband. There was only two of us. Well, now he's gone and my two grandchildren are living with me along with my daughter. So now I have three people living with me. The house is too small and um, the backyard takes me five hours to mow it and weed eat it. And it it's just too much. I want to grow my own food. I want something smaller, smaller backyard, bigger house. And um, I think I'm ready and I'm going to take that leap of faith. And it's scary as hell. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you guys. I'm like scared to death because my real estate agent asked me, and that just came about too. The lady across the street put her house up for sale. And the next thing you know, he comes over and he's like, hey, if you're ever interested, I'm like, hey, I might be. And the next thing you know, he looks at my house and he gives me a number. And I'm like, ooh, I love that number. And I didn't think I was ever going to get that. And he's like, oh, yes, of course. And then he's like, you know, go get pre-qualified. And I'm like, yeah, sure, why not? And I mean, this is how the universe works, right? And uh, I went down there. The lady is wonderful. My realtor, his wife is a healer of all things. So I go to check her out. She's this lovely lady. She runs my numbers and she goes, wow, your credit is phenomenal. <laughs> and I'm like, really? <laughs> and she's like, yeah, you've been pre-qualified and blah, blah. I'm like, what? <laughs> I was like, like the whole time I'm like there with my mouth open. So, and I just figure everything is just falling into place. And you know what? I don't, I want to spend next summer doing more videos and learning more things and maybe taking more classes. I don't want to spend it behind a lawnmower or spending <laughs> half of what I make paying someone to do my yard for me. So it's time. It's time. So please bear with me for until after the holidays because right now, I'm moving, I'm packing everything. I'm moving everything. The house is going to be going up for sale <laughs> um, right the second week of December. Um, and I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. I'm scared and I'm ready to go. And whew, yeah, so here we go. <laughs> Something new. <laughs> I know. And you know, this is funny because this is one of the things that I want to talk to you, um, to you guys about. And it's one of the reasons I bought this up is that I talk to a lot of clients and I'm amazed at the fear that surrounds everything, right? I, it's like we're programmed, well, we are programmed with this fear, right? Where a church um, puts fear into us, schools put fear into us, <laughs> everybody, put, even our spouses, you know, if you don't behave, I'm going to leave you. I mean, everybody puts the fear into you. And so when people get sick, they, they have this horrible fear that surrounds everything. And I see that a lot. So for me, what I've had to do, not only through my illnesses, but every day now, even with this, I, I've looked back on my life and I've realized that no matter what has happened, no matter what, the universe has always had my back, always. And if you look back, if you look back on your life, you're going to realize that no matter how bad something got, no matter whatever, the universe, 99.9% .9 of the time, usually has your back and it will take care of you. You know, call it God, call it fate, call it the universe, call it whatever, call it law of attraction, whatever you want to call it. It does have your back. And I've noticed that. So here I am on the cliff and I'm looking down and I'm like, yeah, this is pretty scary. And as I'm looking over this cliff with the rocks below, <laughs> I'm, you know, the thoughts go through your mind, you know? So what happens if business slows down and now you can't pay for the new house? So what happens, you know, because this house, my ex-husband's name is still on it. So if anything should ever happen, I always had that little voice in the back of my head going, well, you know, you can always call them up and going, you're going to lose the house. <laughs> I know that's horrible to say, but you know, you, I'm telling you the things we tell ourselves, right? 
So, you know, I mean, it's just everything. What happens if you break a leg? What happens if you can't walk? What happens? What happens? What happens? What if? What if? What if? What if? And it, man, you what if yourself to death. But you know what? What if I go into this new house? What if I can pay all the bills just fine? What if my business gets bigger and better? What if my health only gets better and better and better? What if? You know, we always want to dwell on the horrible things that can happen. And we don't dwell on the possibilities of all these wonderful things that can happen. And we need to start doing that, not just for everything that we make a choice in our life, but also for our health. You know, what if you cure that diabetes? You know what the best thing about what ifs is? Is the person that you have to become to become that person. Because when I sat there and I said to myself, what if I can heal this diabetes? What if I can heal all my intestinal issues? What if I can lose 200 pounds? What if my life could be wonderful? And the best thing that has happened all that is the person that I've had to become in order for all those things to come to pass. So there you go. Those are my, that's my public service announcement for the week. I'm trying to find, I'm telling you, everything is a mess. I don't know where anything is anymore. I'm going insane. But if I had it, <laughs> right now I would be showing you this wonderful product I believe it's way over there, maybe, I don't know. I, I would be showing you this wonderful product that I, I can't even say I love. This is, I, I'm beyond in love with this product. It happens to be from one of my sponsors. It's from um, Doctors Vitamin Solutions out of Texas. And I just wanna say that this product exceeded my expectations by a million percent. Five minutes after I took it, I was like, I don't even, I can't even, I can't even describe it. I felt so good. So this product not only has the liposomal vitamin C, which I showed you guys uh, back how to make, right? This one actually has it in it, but it also has one of my absolute favorite must have for the kidneys and every time every single one of my clients that has ever spoken to me about kidney health i've told them you have to be on this not this certain product but this certain supplement these people have taken that supplement liposomal vitamin c put it together and have created one of my absolute favorite products of the year i swear you know, along with the patch. I love the patch too. All right. So I love you guys. And uh, I hope you are all taking care of each other, respecting each other, loving each other, and all that other good stuff. And staying happy and staying healthy. Because I promise you, this stuff is going to keep you and your family really healthy and it's going to be wonderful for your budget so there you go all right we'll see you next week share comment add whatever you gotta do you know share me add me follow me and next week i am going to be sharing that product with you you do not want to miss that bye-bye have a great week